So you might say, well, that's a very strange thing, that there is a gene for crime. And it would be simplistic to say there's a gene for crime. But of course, there's a gene that predisposes towards crime for those people who are unlucky enough to inherit it. It makes a hormone. Um, this is it, testosterone. Okay, um, and this is the hormone testosterone. We all have testosterone, well, we may not know it, um, both men and women, but men have much more. Women have small amounts of testosterone, which is why elderly ladies sometimes grow rather charming mustaches. Um, <laughs> and that's the testosterone. But men have much more. And testosterone is kind of dangerous stuff. Here we have... <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, a student once came up to me after this lecture and said, have you not been well, Professor Jones? <laughs> <laughs> I have never looked like this. Although, this. although this is Steve Jones, who was the 2007 Pan Pacific bodybuilding champion. Now, I don't know whether Steve Jones does this, but plenty of bodybuilders do. They inject themselves with testosterone to make themselves more into an ideal male. And ladies, this is what we all men really want to look like. They've got big, hefty muscles, a truculent and bad-tempered expression, obviously in search of a mate of some kind. Um, and uh, I think you'll agree, a rather impressive posing pouch there. But, um, and, but if you do that and you inject testosterone, your life expectancy drops quite strikingly. You're much more liable to be killed in car crashes, in fights, to be murdered, to commit suicide. All these male things happen much more among testosterone abusers. But it's true also also for the men among us. Here's the patterns of life and death for men and women at different ages. As you can see, from 0 to 80 at the bottom, mortality rate up the vertical axis. And at the top left, you can see the men in blue, women in red. Men die at a higher rate than women at all ages. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, and you, can, you can dissect that a bit. If you look at the bottom left, accidental death, men die in accidents at a much higher rate than women do. Four-year-old boys are killed in accidents at twice the rate of four-year-old girls. And the effect gets even more striking when you get to be a young adult. It is the case, and many people dispute this, but it is in fact true, that men are struck by lightning at three times the rate of women. <laughs> and that's not because there's a gene that attracts thunderbolts. That's because they do those male things about going onto a golf course with a lightning conductor in their hand <laughs> or climbing up a mountain to show how masculine they are and zap, they get hit. Interestingly, on the bottom right there, uh, men are much less good damn it, men are much less good at dealing with parasitic and infectious diseases because one of the effects of, of testosterone is to suppress the immune system. Uh, that, rather in brackets, is why women have more autoimmune diseases where the immune system turns upon itself, um, like, multi, like multiple sclerosis. And most of all, men are murdered much more than women are. Okay? But men get their own back because they murder much more than women do. <laughs> And here's the murder rate in England and Wales. Men in red this time, just to be awkward, women in blue. And you can see that the murder rate by men is 10 times what it is by women. It peaks at about the time when a young man is trying to show what a wonderful husband he'd make at the age of 25, <laughs> or trying to get rid of the opposition. Some grumpy old men here. I know, exa <laughs> I know exactly how they feel. And that 10 times difference is universal. The murder rate across the world varies by 100 times, from Singapore, where it's very low, to Honduras, where it's 100 times more common. But it's still a 10 times different between men and women. For example, in the city of Detroit, we have exactly the same pattern, although elderly men are more grumpy, okay? A 10 times difference, a peak at the age of 25. So you might say, well, here we have the gene for murder, for crime. And you'd be absolutely right. You definitely do have the gene for murder and for crime. But hang on a minute, look at the vertical axis. The murder rate per million per year in Detroit goes up to 1,000. The murder rate per million per year in the United Kingdom is between 20 and 25. It's come down from these figures now. So what that's telling you is that a particular gene predisposes those men, as we call them, to violence, but only manifests itself, like the Siamese cat, in a certain environment. If you're in an environment like Detroit, where you're surrounded by poverty, by drugs, by gangs, by 
police brutality, all these things, then there would be a massive murder rate. If you're in somewhere like Britain, and even more so in Singapore, which is a relatively, relatively equitable society, that's much more likely. So we've got a situation then that some people, because of their own heritage, are at more, uh, uh, at more danger of becoming murderers and being murdered because of the environment in which they live. So that really tells you but the idea that you can separate out nature and nurture for murder or anything else is completely foolish. Or to put it in a broader context, it also tells you that science will tell you everything you need to know about yourself apart from the interesting stuff. So I'll stop there.